This is one of the biggest issues that people come to me and tell me that they're struggling with. They tell me that they are struggling so much with being able to love themselves, being able to accept themselves, just being able to like themselves for who they are. That they tell me that they find it so hard to turn off the thoughts in their head that are telling them why they're not good enough, why they're not lovable enough, why they're not smart enough, capable enough, worthy enough, beautiful enough, successful enough, have the right kind of body enough. And they don't know what to do about it. They don't know how to love themselves. And I'm going to tell you right now, there is no quick fix. There's no one and done. There's no easy button that you press and that all of a sudden you are just full of all the self-love at the click of a button. It doesn't work like that. This does take work. But the other thing is that it doesn't happen on its own. It's one of the, it's not one of those things where you're just like, well, oh well, I'll just like wait and see what happens. I'll just sort of keep living my life and doing things and thinking the way I always have and doing things the way that I've always done them and I won't make any change. And I'll just hope that my brain just all of a sudden one day decides that I'm good enough, <laughs> that I'm lovable enough, that I'm worthy enough, that I can feel good about who I am. It does not work that way. It takes work. It takes intention. It takes having support. It takes learning tools. It is absolutely possible to love yourself without apology. No matter where you are right now, it is absolutely possible and extremely doable, but it does take some work. And so today I'm going to teach you a little trick that, you know, it sounds kind of like kitschy or whatever to call it a trick, but it is just like this little thing that you can do, this little switch that you can put into your brain that's going to help you open your mind up to loving yourself more, that's going to help start start laying some of those bricks as you build up that solid foundation, that solid build up the solid foundation. That doesn't really make sense. As you, as you're laying the bricks on the ground, you're laying a really, you know, solid brick patio. <laughs> That solid foundation to start building your relationship with yourself. If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comments. If you're back, say hello in the comments. Love being able to connect with all of you. Either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my incredible community, the Shift Society, that is just growing and is full of incredible men and women digging this work deeper, doing this work. This fall, we are focusing on self-love and building our relationship with ourselves, building that deep sense of confidence in who we are, not just the pretending on the surface to feel good about ourselves, but that deep lasting confidence from the inside out. Come and join us. You can get more information in the link in the description. I help heart center go-getter men and women break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. Our lives change when we like ourselves more, when we love ourselves, when we are building that solid relationship in who we are. Everything in our lives change, how, changes. How we show up changes. Our relationships change. I did another video about this, about these myths that we have about what it means to love yourself and how a lot of us are resistant to this idea because we think that it will have a negative impact um, in a lot of ways. So there is a video about that. I'll put the link to that to dispel some of those myths. But really working on our relationship with ourselves and how important this is, how this changes our lives. It changes how we show up. It changes what we do. It changes the actions we take. It changes everything because so much of what we avoid, so much of what we prevent ourselves from doing, so much of how we keep ourselves hidden and small is because we are afraid of what other people are going to think about us and ultimately what we are going to think about us. If our relationship with ourself is, is flimsy, if it's tenuous, if it's unstable, then we are often scared that if we show up, if we put ourselves out there, if we make ourselves vulnerable, if we try something new, if we take something on, if we take a risk and it doesn't go well, then we are going to give ourselves hell. 
We are going to be terrible to ourselves. We are going to rip ourselves apart. We're going to tear ourselves down. We're going to criticize and judge and condemn ourselves. We are more afraid of what we are going to do to ourselves what we are going to make something mean about us and our worth and our value as a human being, often then we are really afraid of other people, what they're going to think. Often we are only really afraid of what other people are going to think of us because of what we are going to make that mean. Because we are afraid that we are actually going to believe them and then we are going to feel terrible. So building that solid foundation. I used to struggle so much with my relationship with myself. I used to kind of kind of hate myself a lot of the time. Not all the time. There are times where I'm like, okay, like I think we're okay. But my relationship with myself was very tenuous. It was very much dependent on things on the outside. Um, Whether or not things were going well in my life on the outside, whether or not my relationships were going well, whether or not I was feeling um, like I was being successful or I was being included in everything or that the world was sort of existing in this way that would allow me to feel good about myself. All of my self-worth was put on the outside. And so you know how tenuous and how flimsy and how unstable that is when we are giving our self-worth to things outside of our full control and things that fluctuate, things that are unstable and uncertain and that can change when we are putting our self-worth, when we are putting our relationship with ourselves, when we are giving it to the outside. It's risky business. And it's going to mean that it's not going to be able to be stable and secure. And so I struggled so much with my relationship with myself. I remember sitting and just kind of hating myself a lot of the time, feeling terrible about myself. And then I was like, this has to stop. This has to stop. I don't want to feel like I'm on this emotional roller coaster and my sense of self my relationship with myself, my ability to feel good about myself is so dependent on all these other things. And so started doing this work, started deep diving into this, sort of really understanding what it takes to love yourself and how to love yourself. And now I teach it and mostly teach it on that deeper level again to my, to the people in the shift society and to my, my one-on-one clients as well. And so the sense of self-regard, this positive self-regard, this healthy relationship with ourselves, this doesn't mean that we think that we are all of a sudden God's gift to humanity. (laughs) This doesn't mean that we all of a sudden think we are better than other people. Absolutely not. My relationship with me has nothing to do with anyone else. This is not about feeling better or worse than anyone else. This is my relationship with me. And what it means when I have this healthy relationship with myself, how I know that this is happening, how I know that we are on the right track is if I actually like what I think and how I think. That I like being alone with my thoughts. How many of you are afraid of that? I know a lot of people. Just let me know in the comment section below if you ever are afraid with being alone with your thoughts because you don't like what your brain is going to do. You don't like the path that your brain goes down. Let me know that in the comments. That's a real thing. A lot of us really struggle with. I don't want to be quiet. I don't want quiet. I don't want stillness. I don't want peace. You know, just sort of physical physical peace around me because it will there will not be peace in my brain. My brain's just going to go start going haywire with all of these um, self rejecting, self deprecating, self defeating thoughts. Having a healthy relationship with ourselves means that we like what we think. We we are able to see our best qualities. We're not delusional. We don't think that like, oh, I'm perfect and I have no, you know, I have no weaknesses. No, we just don't obsess about the weakness. We ignore weaknesses. We just acknowledge that we're all human, that we all have strengths. We all have areas that we can work on. And that's just it. This isn't a judgment. This is just a reality of being a human being that I'm able to see my best qualities. I'm able to give myself the benefit of the doubt. I'm able to have my own back. I'm able to have self-compassion and understanding for my struggles and my setbacks that I don't automatically go into self-annihilation. If I'm ever struggling or if I ever fail at something or if I ever get rejected, I don't automatically go into all of that um, self-hatred, that self-rejection. This doesn't mean we become a narcissist. Loving yourself does not make you self-absorbed. It makes you self-solid. 
We are going for self-solid. We are not going for self-lording ourselves over other human beings. We are going from being able to stand secure and firm and clear in who we are. It's not about pushing anyone down, but it's also not about pushing ourselves down. It's about standing solid in who we are. Again, this isn't about what other people think. Developing your relationship with yourself is about developing what you think. A lot of us get resistant to this idea of loving ourselves because we think that our self-criticism and our self-hatred is what is motivating us to move forward. And just full honesty in the comments, let us know if you're like, yeah, I'm kind of like, I like the idea of loving and accepting myself, but I sometimes think that that's my edge, that my self-hatred and my self-rejection, that my self-criticism is what is the fire that gets me moving and motivated to do better, to grow, to expand, to be more successful, to push harder. Full transparency, I used to think that. I've actually had clients come to me and say, you know, I want to feel better about myself, but you know, I'm a little bit scared that if I feel too good about myself, then I'll stop trying. <laughs> I've actually had people say that, really successful people that have come and said, you know, like, don't take, take the part away where I feel terrible all the time, but not the part away where that kind of self-criticism spurs me forward. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry, it does not work that way. But I am going to tell you that loving and accepting yourself is not going to turn you into a lazy blob. That the only way to motivate yourself is not out of self-hatred. <laughs> That is the good news because so often our motivation comes from, this is unhealthy motivation. So we'll talk now just a little bit about, I'll kind of go off to the side and talk about healthy motivation versus unhealthy motivation. So a lot of us are being uh, fueled by unhealthy motivation. We are being driven by this, this belief of what can I prove, right? What can I prove to other people? What can I earn, like earning approval, or earning um, acceptance, or who can I impress? And this is all ego-based. When I'm being driven out of trying to protect my ego or inflate my ego, I am making it all about me and about this really kind of tenuous relationship with myself. You can see that, right? Like when I say that, what can I prove? What can I earn? Who can I impress? That there is this sort of like this bit of like desperation, this kind of push where we're like, ah, oh, I just need to get this so that I can prove this, so that I can be this, so I can feel this. Versus a different kind of motivation. When we have our solid sense of self and who we are, there isn't this proving and pushing energy, but you better believe that we are still gonna wanna grow because human beings are hardwired for growth. We do well when we are learning, when we are growing, when we are expanding, when we are participating in our lives. We feel good when we're in that flow, when there is that bit of like tension of growth. Not the negative tension that we're like trying, again, trying to prove something, but that tension of like, ooh, like this is kind of uncharted territories. Let's see what happens. Let's see what we can learn. Let's see how we can expand, which then comes back to, yeah, that healthy motivation comes back to what can I learn? How can I grow? What's going to allow me to expand? Who can I serve? How can I make this world a better place with my contribution? Do you see the difference there? It's like a completely different energy. So loving ourselves, moving from that place of self-love allows us to continue to show up and do amazing things in this life and in this world, but we are doing it with a different motivation. So we actually get to feel good in the process instead of feeling terrible in the process and only feeling good when we get to the outcome and then only feeling good for a second before the bar raises and now we have to do more things to prove, to impress, to earn. Changing that motivation. So now when learning to love yourself more, a simple trick that you can use is something that I call the sunny side. So I've talked about this before, about the Jungian shadow side. So Jung was a, um, a colleague, colleague of Freud and of Adler and of Rogers and all those really famous psychologists back from, I think, around the turn of the, of the 20th century. And Jung 
created this concept of our shadow, of the human shadow. And this concept is, I won't go into this deeply because I've done another video on it, but just this concept that like that idea, if you've ever heard it, like if you spot it, you got it, that usually the things that irritate us and annoy us about other people are the things, the sort of disowned, rejected parts of ourselves that they are reflecting. So we won't go into that right now, but that is the Jungian shadow side. But then there's also the opposite of this, which is the sunny side. And this is a real psychological concept. This is a real thing that the things that you like and appreciate and admire and respect and are drawn to in other people are also reflections of parts of yourself. They are also part of who you are. That's why you can see them. That's why they are visible to you is because they are a reflection of you. So your homework is to take some time and to think about and notice the people that you're drawn to, the people that you really like, the people that you're like, they're just like good people. I just really like them. And I want you to think about what it is that you like about them. What is it that you appreciate appreciate about them? get as specific as possible and then i want to invite you to see those things in yourself as well and to recognize and acknowledge that those things are absolutely in you as well if they weren't you wouldn't be able to see them if you want to completely shift your relationship with yourself how you think and feel about yourself in a deep and lasting way Join us in the Shift Society. This is our fall focus. We are focusing all on cultivating a solid, healthy relationship with ourselves so that we can love ourselves without apology, so we can build that deep sense of lasting confidence. Get on the wait list. The link is below. And until next time, take good care.